Welcome to the E4 fam. We are delighted that you have joined us today. And if you are in the DFW area and you want to learn more about us, come check us out at our next interest meeting, Saturday, June 24th at 11 a.m. at our new location. Come meet us, learn what we're all about, and come ready to join the family. We're continuing our series, Follow Me, but we're nearing the end as we've been reading through the book of Mark together as a church. If you missed any part of this series, I invite you to take a look at our website or our YouTube channel. Well, our Bible studies are continuing on. Come join one and check us out. E4 Kids, your worship service starts right now at e4familychurch.com. And parents, we have that parent guide that has everything you need to help you be successful today. I invite you to worship the Lord through your giving at e4familychurch.com. Thank you to all of those who have given and continue to give. We just pray blessings over you. It's time to pray. And I know there are a lot of things going on today, a lot of things going on in your world, but I also know that a lot of our members are in need of healing. So I want you to join me in praying for the healing of the saints, but also for provision. Let's ask God for what we need and let's watch him be a good daddy and provide those things for it is in his word to do so. So let's pray. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us all together, Lord God. Father, I just lift up all my brothers and sisters who are in need of healing. God, I pray that you would do a healing, that you would do a work in their bodies, oh God, that you would touch each one and bring healing, God. I pray that our faith would arise, Father, and that you would do what you can do, Father, because nothing is impossible uh, with you, oh God, and nothing is impossible to him who believes. So God, we thank you for your healing. God, we ask for your provision, God. You tell us in Mark 6 to not worry about what we will wear, what we will drink, what we will eat, for you know that we need these things. So seek first the kingdom of heaven. And you said all these things shall be added unto us. So God, I pray we will seek first your kingdom, that we would come to you first above all else. And as we do so, Lord God, you will be faithful to provide all of the things that we have need of. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship. Caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment And I never want to leave I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't owe me anything But more than anything that you can do I just want you And I just want you Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. And I just want you, and nothing else, and nothing else, nothing else will do. Come on, sing. I just want you, and nothing else. Nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you, and nothing else, and nothing else, 
nothing else will do I'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet caught up in this holy moment and I never want to blessings Jesus you don't owe me anything but more than anything that you can do I just want you just want you I 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 just want you Better is one day in your courts Better is one day in your house Better is one day in your courts Thousands elsewhere Come on, say Better is one day in your courts Better is one day in your house Better is one day in your courts Thousands elsewhere Better is one day Yeah Better is one day Better is one day Yeah Better is one day Better is one day in your cause Better is one day in your house Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. And thousands elsewhere. Hello and welcome to the family. I remember my first taste of war, not on a big scale, but but it was big enough for me. You see, I was about seven or eight years old and, and we walk into the gym and sitting on the floor, neatly placed, were dodgeballs. Now, if you grew up in the 70s or 80s, you know where I'm going. These weren't like the little soft, fluffy things that the kids throw around now. These things were designed to destroy. Like you could take sheet rock, paint off a sheet rock. Like you could take the wind, just knock it right out of a person. And if you catch them just right, man, you hit them while they're in the air. Man, they go slide across that gym floor, especially after it was just wax. And here we are. We're having to choose sides. We pick this one, we pick that one. And the goal is that we would pick the right people so that at the end of this war, we would be victorious. And, and the second goal was, man, we didn't want to get hit hard with that ball. So all the people that were strong, man, we wanted them on our side. In the event, if they were on the other side, you didn't want to get hit with that thing. It was serious. 
But I remember looking at the faces of those not chosen, of those who wanted to be on the winning team, but the frustration that they felt when neither leader wanted to choose them. Well, friends, that feeling doesn't go away. And I remember as an adult feeling that same way as, as a little child in the second grade, third grade, even in high school. Well, you know what's amazing? Is our God knows what it feels like to be rejected. He knows what it feels like to receive a text message from somebody that you're interested in, somebody that you've been courting, somebody that you've been dating, somebody that you've confessed your heart. You've told them, I love you. I want to be with you only for them to tell you, I don't have the same feelings for you. I'm interested in someone else. Like, what does that feel like? The rejection and the hurt. Well, what's incredible is that when we pray, we pray to a God who knows what it feels like to be rejected. But we also pray to a God that says, I love you and I want you. Don't reject me. And he is seated right now at the right hand of the father, making intercession on our behalf. He is saying, I fearfully and wonderfully made you. I knit you together in your mother's womb. And all I want for you to do is to receive me, to come after me, to pursue me in the same way that I have received you, that I've pursued you. Don't stiff arm me like they did when I came 2000 years ago. As so our friends, as we continue this journey as a disciple, I want you to know in, in part two, this is a picture to encourage us to let us know that God knows what it feels like to be told, I don't want you. I don't love you. God knows what it feels like to be told, I'll never leave you. And then when it gets hard to watch those people leave, he understands. Let me pray for us. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your desire to speak to us, to encourage us, and to heal us. That, Father, while the world may have rejected us, I thank you, Lord, that not only did you save us, but your desire, God, is to make us new so that our past, however broken it was, doesn't define us, so that our future is forever secure in you. So, Father, use me today to speak to hearts, to speak to minds, to speak to souls, Use me today to speak life, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, the A stop on this journey begins with the false arrest of Jesus. Now, Jesus was arrested. Jesus knows what it's like to go to jail. He knows what it's like to be put on trial. Mark 14, 44. And he knows what it's like to be betrayed by his best friends. Now, his betrayer had given them a signal saying, whoever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him and lead him away safely. And as soon as he had come, immediately he went up to him and he said to him, Rabbi, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And then he lay, they laid their hands on him and they took him. And one of those who stood by, he drew his sword and he struck the servant of the high priest and he cut off his ear. The other gospels are amazing because they tell us that while this servant stands there and sees his ear being detached from his body, that Jesus tells the man with the sword, who we know was Peter, Put that sword away. And then Jesus picks up the servant's ear and he, and he heals the man. Then Jesus answered and he said to them, have you come out against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching and you did not seize me, but that the scriptures must be fulfilled. And then they all forsook him and fled. They were terrified. They were afraid because they see this 
this guard coming under the cover of night, being led by one of their own, Judas. And they're terrified. But the story continues and this part I want you to pay attention to because it gives us a clue perhaps as to the person that partnered with Peter in writing this gospel. Verse 51, it says, now a certain young man followed him, having a linen cloth around him, around his naked body. And as the young man laid hold of him and he left the linen cloth and he fled from them naked. You see, there were others that would sometimes stand nearby. And what we understand from history that perhaps this could have been the very one that, that Peter chose to write this gospel. And we believe that this perhaps was John Mark and that John Mark was there under the cover of night, a, a young lad seeing this whole thing, that his family, that they too were followers of Christ. And John, I mean, excuse me, Mark was close enough. John Mark right there. And then the same way the disciples were gripped with fear, John Mark was too. And he is saying to us all that I ran for my life. They fled. This was serious. I want you to understand that Jesus' arrest wasn't this peaceful thing that took place. He went peacefully, but they came ready for violence. And the apostles were afraid. But the night stopped. The false witness against Jesus. And they led Jesus away to the high priest. And with him were assembled all of the chief priests and the elders and the scribes. But Peter followed him at a distance. Right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he sat with the servants and he warmed himself at the fire. He's trying to see what they're doing. He's trying to listen in and hear. And now the chief priests and all the council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death. But they found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimonies did not agree. Then some rose up. And bore false witness against him, saying, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands. And within three days, I will build another made with hands. And they didn't understand that Jesus wasn't talking about the temple that Herod the Great began to build. He was talking about his own body. But even, not even when they, they told this, did their testimony agree? And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, do you answer nothing? Do you hear what these men are saying? They're testifying against you. Speak. Answer us. But this leads us to the 10th stop. And this is so important. This is the promised return of Jesus, that in addition to Jesus telling his disciples, those who belong to him, he made it known even to his captors, even to his accusers, even to the very ones trying to kill him, his desire to save them. But he kept silent and he answered nothing. And the high priest answered him, saying to him, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed? And Jesus answered, I am. Man, this is so powerful. And then he goes on and he says, and you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. He is telling us about what's going to happen when he returns. He is telling us also where he's going to be while we patiently await that right now I'm here with you but I'm going to go and I'm going to be seated at the right hand of the father, the right hand of power. And I'm going to come in the clouds of heaven. When I return the 11th stop, even after Jesus says this, even after the miracles, even after the guy with the ear, remember the chief priest, the, the, the guy's servant is there. Like my ear, it was on the ground. It was cut off by one of his disciples. None of that matters. They are so full of hate and anger. 
that even the miracles that they've witnessed with their own eyes, they've seen the paralyzed and the crippled. They've seen these people that couldn't speak, the deaf, the mute. They've seen the demon possessed all delivered by Jesus and even said, no one can do these things unless they come from God. But even with all of that, their heart was still full of hate and they rejected Jesus. Then the high priest tore his clothes and he said, what further need do we have of witness? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him to be deserving of death. Then some began to spit on him and they blindfolded him and they beat him and they said to him, prophesy. And the officers struck him with the palm of their hands. They're beating our Lord. They're rejecting him. The one whom they heard preach and teach. The one who was doing the very miracles that were said of the Messiah. That when he comes... He's going to come with a teaching, with his own authority. When he comes, the blind will see, the lame will walk, and these signs have happened, yet they are beating him. And the 12th stop is the first denial of Jesus. Mark 6, 14, 66. Now, as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the serving girls of the high priest came. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked at him and she said, you also were with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you were saying. I don't know him. And he went out of the porch and the rooster crowed and the 13th stop. The second denial of Jesus. Verse 69. And the servant girl saw him again. She followed him. And began to say to those who stood by, hey, this is one of them. But he denied it again. And a little later, those who stood by said to Peter again, surely you are one of them, for you are Galilean and your speech shows it. You talk like him. You sound just like him. You're one of them. This goes on to the 14th stop. The third denial of Jesus. Then he began to curse and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And the second time, the rooster crowed. And then Peter called to mind the words that Jesus said to him. The before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And when he heard it, he thought about it. And he wept. He cried. He went away and he remembered. I was the one that told the Lord, listen, all of them may fall away. All of them may run. All of them may hide. But listen, Jesus, I am here with you to the death. I will never leave you. I won't forsake you. I am here for you. I am Peter the rock. And there he is. The young servant girl telling him, you were with him. You're one of them. And then the crowd saying, you sound like him. You're Galilean. And he began to call curses down on himself. And he heard that rooster crow. And he wept bitterly. And he cried. Friends, what's so powerful is that this gospel was given to us by Peter. Peter gave these words to John Mark to write down so that you and I would understand and see that on this disciple's journey, when the Lord says to you and to me, follow me, that there will be times where we make promises to God. Lord, I'm here for you always. Lord, I love you. Lord, I won't disappoint you. Lord, all will fall away, but I'm right here. But time and time again, we find ourselves like Peter, denying 
the very one who will never deny us. The one right now who is seated at the right hand of the Father, claiming us to be his own. The one who says to us, I will never leave you nor forsake you because I love you. Will you receive me? Will you love me? Will you follow me? What's the Holy Spirit saying to you through this message? Father, I thank you for your desire that we would receive the love that you're giving us, that we would repent from our own sins, that we would acknowledge those times that we have promised you and promised you and we have failed. And we would receive the power of your Holy Spirit, that this same Peter who wrote this gospel is the same one that you go after after you resurrect. It's the same one that you say, feed my sheep. It's the same one who was bold enough to share this truth with us so that we can learn and understand the power of your love. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, I want to encourage you. No matter how far gone you think you are, we can follow Peter's example and know that even though we've messed up, we have this gospel because Peter came back home to Jesus. Peter was bold enough to do exactly what Jesus said today. We have this gospel because Peter said yes when Jesus said, follow me. Well, I can't wait to connect with you all next week as we continue and wrapping up this series, follow me. Blessings. <laughs>